You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to rollermartinunfiltered.com. You can make this possible. One of the things that we also talk about uh, on this show, we talk about money and we talk about, again, uh, the importance of money. Yesterday, uh, President Joe Biden unveiled uh, one of his... Um, one of his executive orders dealt with the issue dealing with racial equity. And we talk about racial equity. We got to do what we're talking about, money. Susan Rice also spoke about that in terms of uh, mandating all of the federal agencies uh, be focused on that very issue of equity, putting that at the forefront. Now, I've told you all about this, and I just want to give you all, under, again, how we're going to start breaking this thing down. One of the things that we're going to do here on Roller Martin Unfiltered uh, we're going to be looking at this issue of equity from multiple departments and showing you where your tax dollars are going. Now, the other day, I had a 45-minute conversation with Joe Anthony, who is suing DDB over him helping them get a $4 billion contract with the U.S. Army, a 10-year contract, $4 billion, that's $400 million a year. Now, I told you the amount of money that the federal government spends every single year when it comes to media advertising and how we are locked out. Well, when I was talking to Joe, I referenced a 2018 report that was commissioned by Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton by the, by the Government Accountability Office. The NNPA, the National Newspaper Publishers Association of the Black Press of America, asked her to put this together so they could have a real accounting of how much federal money your tax dollars are being spent and where is it going? That GAO report revealed federal agencies spend very little advertising with black and other minority owned businesses. According to their report between 2013 and 2018, federal government agencies spent $5 billion on advertising. Let me repeat that for y'all, $5 billion in five years, $327 million went to minority-owned media companies. $51 million of the $327 million went to black media. So again, $5 billion, $327 million going to minorities. $51 billion of the $5 billion going to black folks, 1%. Congresswoman Norton says she would work with black and minority publishers to press her colleagues in Congress to demand greater spending on minority-owned outlets to reach minority audiences that most traditional outlets do not. The question is, has that been happening? Joining us right now is Dr. Ben Chavis. He's the president and CEO of the National Newspaper Publishers Association. Uh, ben, glad to have you back on Roland Martin Unfiltered. You cannot have a growing media entity if you don't get advertising money. Pure and simple. That is a lifeblood of every media operation. Fox News profits a billion plus dollars a year. CNN, some 700 million. MSNBC, six, 700 million. That's profit. They make way more than that. But the reality is, when you start talking about black media, it ain't even close to that because we've been frozen out. Uh, this GAO report was, was important. What has happened in the last two years with us starting just now in 2021? Thank you, uh, Roland. This is a very important issue uh, for all Black-owned media. And certainly, uh, it's a good thing that President Biden now has put as a priority the question of equity. And once he signs these executive orders, which he has, the question now is how are these executive orders to be implemented? Uh, who's going to ride herd? I understand that Ambassador Susan Rice has been given a responsibility to have interagency oversight. The federal government in 2021 is still the largest single advertiser, over a billion dollars. And a lot of that money does not go uh, to black-owned media. So what needs to happen is there needs to be further legislation. Eleanor Holmes Norton's bill was the start to get the study done. Now, after the study has been done, which we always knew these inequities were there, uh, Roland, uh, your last segment was about white terrorism. 
Well, look, white supremacy has also been in government spending. Uh, the denial of, of black-owned uh, media to be in the advertising budgets uh, keeps our media houses uh, uh, almost in a form of uh, uh, neo-slavery, uh, oppression. And so that needs to be overcome. So I think that while we have a new administration, the Biden-Harris administration, uh, black media now, we must press this course. Because if there's ever a time that we need to get equity, uh, and equity goes beyond equality. Equity is a financial term that means that there will be equal sharing, equitable sharing in the distribution of resources. And right now, there's a long history of the inequities, the long history of the denial of black-owned businesses, in this case, black media businesses, from getting into the federal budgets of all the agencies. If, if we had fairness, you know, we are almost 14, 15 percent of the population. Rather than 1 percent, if we got 15 percent of federal uh, dollars spending on black media, it would make a difference, a, a life-supporting difference and sustainability difference for all black-owned media in America. Well, hell, if, you, if, if black media got just 10 percent of the $1 billion annually, you're talking about going uh, from a total of... Uh, 50, uh, a total of 51 million. First of all, uh, 50, uh, 50, remember, that's 50, to everybody understand, that's 51 million out of the 5 billion, which really means that broke down to about 10 million a year. So you're talking about if you go from 10, 10 million a year to 100 million a year, that's, that's significant, and that's just 10%. But Ben, the thing here that, that uh, I want to know is, that was dropped in 2018. What happened 2019, 2020? Was there any improvement? Did you see any improvement? No, uh, we did not see an improvement. In fact, uh, during the Trump administration, there was a denial of what uh, Congress, uh, Holmes Norton, Eleanor Holmes Norton's bill exposed. And so now we have to go back and uh, uh, repress this course now that we have a change in administration. I think the uh, o OMB, uh, the Department of Treasury, uh, the Department of Commerce, all these things will have to uh, be readdressed, and we've got to keep the pressure on. I think everybody is celebrating uh, the new administration, but our celebration now must be translated into concrete, equitable distribution of resources. And again, this is not, we're not asking for charity, Roland. This is business. This is one on one business. No, no, no. This is, no, no, no. Let's be clear. This is taxpayer money. Black Correct. people's money, too. That's right. We pay taxes, but the distribution of the taxes do not come back to our community. Plus, but, our spending. African Americans spend over a trillion dollars in the American economy every year. But very little of that money is turned back into our community. But I think what I, I think also what, what we have to do is this is actually uh, a multi-level approach, which is what I was talking to Joe Anthony about the other night. And that is... What really happens here is, first, the people who get the advertising contracts are the white advertising agencies. Agencies, that's right. What the, what the federal agency, what the federal government then does, gives them complete control over the dollars. So you don't have any real oversight or d demands for how they should operate. So then what happens is these white ad agencies then screw the black ad agencies, don't even consider them to be partners when it comes to distributing the money to black media. And as you know, if, you, if, if black ad agency is frozen out, we ain't getting anything. I can tell That's you, correct. as somebody who has participated, I have participated in the past six months on several phone calls with major white ad agencies. And in the conversations, you can hear them ask the questions in order for them to set you up to for them to be able to say, no, uh, we're not going to give you any money. In fact, Congressman Stephen Horsford sat on this show and said that Young and Rubicam told him when it came to the census money, they were not going to buy any ads in any newspaper, 50,000 circulation or, or, or less. Ben, that's 98% of black newspapers in America. Exactly. 
What, what again, is institutionalized racism, I and mean, put it uh, like you said, Roland, it's institutionalized white supremacy racism. It's institutionalized white supremacy inequities. And so uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris, they're going to be challenged, uh, not only by these white supremacists that are going uh, crazy in the street level, but white supremacy is also in public policy making. White supremacy is also in the regulatory agencies. And these advertising agencies that you mentioned, why do they keep getting all of the federal contracts? And that needs to be looked at, because these ad agencies are a fundamental pro part of the problem. And so, again, I need for the people at home, because one of the reasons why I'm purposely doing this, I'm going to bring my panel in in just a second, uh, and uh, they have questions for you as well, Ben. I'm trying to walk our people through this because yes. I think a big part of this is that our folk don't know. And when I say our folks, I don't just mean the people who are watching. I'm telling you right now, city council members don't know this. County, county commissioners, state legislators, right. our CBC members don't know. They go out and they fight for the additional money to be placed in the budgets, but then don't understand what happens once the money is allocated and then how they freeze us out. They don't understand how what some of these white ad agencies will do is go out, hire them two Negroes, I'm saying that for a reason, give them a 60 or $70,000 consulting contract. Those two Negroes are happy. They got them a consulting contract without realizing that they really are screwing the black ad agency out of 30, 40, 50, 60 million dollars. So you right. took 70 million dollars, you took 70,000 or 100,000 or 200,000 for a consulting contract when, dumbass, you could have got 50 million. Because if you do the numbers, let's take the US Census. YNR had access to $350 million. YNR gets the contract. YNR takes their 15% off the top. Y'all, do the math. That's $42.5 million. Then they give it, they, then they assign it to another agency that they own. Then they get their cut. Then they assign to another agency that they own to handle the digital, the print, and the broadcast. They all getting cut. So the $350 million, by the time it gets down to being spent, hell, they already took $100 million. So, so, Roland, that we need to call them out, but I, your point about the, the lack of information and facts steadily, consistently, on a daily basis going to the black community, that's a great point. What I think we should work together, uh, Roland, we need to come out with an equity uh, report card on all the ad agencies, on all the federal agencies, anybody dealing with advertising dollars in the government sector, not on the federal level, state level, municipal level, and county levels. Uh, I'm telling you, African-American-owned businesses, particularly black-owned media businesses, are being robbed every day because of these inequities. So, again, for everybody who's watching at home, I'm trying to connect the dots here so people understand uh, what, what we are dealing with. And what we're dealing with right now is uh, how the system is set up. And then what they then do is they then begin to look into the loopholes, then how to freeze people out. I have called for the Congressional Black Caucus to demand an audit of Young and Rubicam to know where every single media dollar went to go for the United States Census. Every single dollar. And I don't want groupings. I don't want groupings of this is how much minority media got. No, 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 no. I want to know specifically here were the media outlets. I want to see who got the most to who got the least. And then I want to see who they identify as black-owned media. Because again, to me, the audit needs to be black, it needs to be minority media, it needs to be black-targeted media, then black-owned media, in order to get a real assessment. I, and again, don't, I, don't put MWBE, don't put white women in this. To me, in order for you to do it right, you got to break the numbers down. And I've been in contact with the Congressional Black Caucus about this because, again, if you, we got to fight, we got to fight the main advertising agencies. But there is no way in hell government agencies should be practicing racism, what you're seeing in private industry. And so that means targeting the federal government, 
targeting these state governments, these county governments, these city governments, going after each one. And then there should be congressional hearings on Capitol Hill of these ad agencies and how they are screwing over black media. Absolutely. If there ever was a strategic time to do what you just said, Roland Martin, it is now. We need to do it now. Uh, we, we don't need to be uh, reactive. We need to be proactive. And we need to, uh, as we say in North Carolina, we need to pull the sheets off these people. Let's go. Uh, Scott Bolden, you represent NNPA. You do work with them on a legal basis. Uh, your thoughts on this and the issue. I mean, this we're talking millions and millions of dollars. And this is the reason right here black media can't grow. This is re the reason right here why we don't have newsrooms of 50 and 75 and 100 employees, because, hell, if you don't get the advertising money, you can't hire nobody and build capacity. Mute button, Scott. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Now they had your audio down. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Dr. Chavis, good seeing you. You know, most uh, you. most of our businesses are going to probably be reluctant to take on the ad agencies vis-a-vis -vis private sector because what Roland just laid out was, you know, they want their piece of the pie too. But they ain't getting but, nothing. You, you're right. But in their mentality... 50 million. They said, I can't get 50 million, but I can get my 10,000. I can get my 25,000. But Dr. Chavis, my question to you is, uh, in partnering with NABJ and other organizations and going to the Hill uh, to advocate, and I know you do that every year uh, for NMPA, who are your angel investors in the House and Senate and in the White House? Who carries that fight for us against the federal government as, as you represent the NMPA and Obviously, NAPJ is out there as well. Who are your angel investors on the Hill that can take this fight and see it through to the end? Well, Congresswoman Maxine Waters is chair of the Finance Committee. Uh, we've had some discussions about this. She has oversight over all the banking and financial services institutions that also don't advertise with Black-owned media. So uh, Congresswoman Maxine Waters is one. But I would also say now, because of the announcement this week by President Biden, that Ambassador Susan Rice uh, certainly needs to be called upon. We need to meet with her, like ASAP, to make sure that her responsibility now to ride oversight over mm -hmm. all of the federal government. Uh, uh, they, they, they like to use this term, uh, a whole of government approach. Well, we need a yeah. whole of government approach uh, from the White House, the members of Congress, but also we need uh, NNPA, the NABJ, and other uh, Black-owned uh, media organizations uh, to press this course. Now's the time to do it. Well, look, so I, look, I, I, just I, legislation or a reg that says 20 percent of that billion dollar needs to go to black media. Isn't that just the more simple answer? Well, again, getting it, getting those formulas, getting those policies in place. Uh, we've just witnessed four years of triage, four years of denial. If anything, the uh, last four years, the Trump administration did everything they could uh, to put black people out of business, you know, yeah. rather than in business. And so now we have to recover not only from the coronavirus, but we have to recover from systematic, systemic white racism, terrorism, both on the streets and in the pocketbooks of black owned businesses. Robert Patillo. Uh, one of the things that we've seen this year in particular is the need to uh, to address black audiences. During the campaigns, there was a special effort made to target black folks in many ways that was brought Democrats across the finish line. As we're rolling out the coronavirus virus vaccine, there's been a great emphasis on communicating with black communities. The military each year is one of the largest advertisers in the country, and they're more than happy to recruit, to recruit black and brown people for the military, but they aren't spending that money in uh, with black and brown media outlets. What can be done legislatively, what can be done, put into law that will not violate any, or uh, uh, what the model legislation out there that would address these issues? Because simply put, this is a line item and a budget uh, issue that more to, uh, that could pass very easily. But where's the legislation at and who's pushing that legislation? One second. So before before you go there, let me, let, let me also, let me, let me unpack this here. There were people who were patting themselves on their backs about <laughs> uh, the amount of money that was being spent on black media. But let me be perfectly clear, it simply was wholly inadequate. Now, you're talking to somebody who did get money, 
from the Biden campaign, Ossoff and Warnock campaign, the DSCCC, was it what it should have been? Hell no. Now, why am I saying that? Because let me be real clear. Political dollars, just like other folk, they expect us to take crumbs as opposed to appreciating what we actually bring to the table. Now, when folk get in trouble, then all of a sudden they respect us and then they want to come as the last second. And so what I'm talking about here, and because I'm tell I dealt with the same thing dealing with the DSCCC. We were on a phone call with the white ad buyers and they sitting here with what are your metrics, what are your numbers, all this sort of stuff along those lines. And they were not treating us being like a media company. They were treating us like, like a specialty, like, well, like, like you a celebrity. I'm like, no, 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 no. Talk to me like you talk to CNN. Talk to me like you talk to Fox News and all the Atlanta radio stations and TV stations who got paid. And so it's, it's all of that. See, Ben, if we put the federal government on notice, private industry will be on notice. Political parties will be on notice. That's why it's important to get them to act right, because the argument we can make is that's tax dollars y'all are screwing us out of. Absolutely. Everybody knows the power of the black vote. Uh, there would, uh, Biden would not be president. Kamala Harris would not be vice president. Uh, the brothers and the uh, election that took place in Georgia would not have happened without the black vote. In fact, the Democratic Party would not be leading the House, the Senate, and the White House uh, if it were not for the black vote. The question is, why do we have to now beg the people uh, who we put in office uh, to treat us right? Um, that's what's at stake. Uh, it, it is it is not only a, a question of uh, equity, is it a quest it's also a question of integrity. It's a question of reciprocity. It's a question of respect. And we are going to press this course like never before. You know, I I, I get a kick, Monique, out, out of stuck on stupid people uh, who one think they know what we're talking about as if we don't know it, as if we ain't been living this. I mean, you know, I've only been doing media for 38 years. I mean, that's it, just only. You know, then somebody put, uh, study CNN, ABC, NBC is a model for international growth. Your ass can't go international if you can't be national, Thomas Thomas. See, I mean, stop saying stupid stuff, okay? I can't, how in the hell am I gonna go across the pond if I can't even go across town? That's right. Wait, was, was his name really Thomas Thomas? This, I mean, no, I, I mean, but see, and again, but people don't understand, okay? You do not have a dedicated individual who covers Congress for black media because we can't afford the extra staff. This is a numbers game. Look, I got, four, I got 12 people who work for me. Do you know a bunch of uh, black newspapers ain't got 12 people? <laughs> and again, it's capacity. If you're not getting the dollars, you can't hire people. You can't hire people, you can't cover stuff. You can't cover what's happening in your city, you sure as hell can't cover the state. You can't cover the nation, and you can't cover the world. Okay, yes. Is it my turn? Yes, go. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> so... <laughs> From from last night, and thank you, Roland. Just in the in the middle of the the night, the wee hours of the morning, coming onto my live. But I want to continue that conversation uh, because I was talking about this word equity and the difference between equity and equality, and how grateful I am for this current administration that understands that it's not just nomenclature. And where I guess I would agree, I'm not going to disagree with Dr. Chavis. I love you, Dr. Chavis. God bless you. But the rest of y'all, the way that I'm going to disagree is it's not just money. Because when we look at the difference between equality and equity, and then if I dare go from equity to justice, what I'm saying is equality is Everybody gets the same thing. You get three apples, you get three apples, you get three apples, you get three apples. It's too late for the United States. 
with that uh, because we have slavery, slavery and the vestiges of it. We have discrimination in the vestiges of it. We have Jim Crow in the vestiges of it. We have redlining in the vestiges of it. Uh, we have inadequate school systems in the vestiges of it. So we're living in what could have been equal three centuries ago, but no. All right. And so we got to get to equity. And that's where President Biden and, our, and Vice President Harris, thank you, black woman winning, and, and the administration, they're saying, ah, but it's equity because equal doesn't matter if one person only has one arm and the other person has two. So what we got to do now is we got to give ladders, we got to give extra funds, we have to give incentives, we have to make ways so that the result, the outcome is equal. And, and I'm thankful that they understand that difference. Uh, GW, George Washington University, I think it's their Milken Institute. They have a great study on this of equality versus equity. What is the difference? What does it mean? Why is it important for disenfranchised people? So I would encourage you all to go and look that up right now. I will give you the website, but but Roland get mad mad at me if I look at my phone. Mm -hmm. So Ben, go ahead. Look that up. But what I'm but 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 here's the thing. They go further and they say equal is. You get a ladder, you get a ladder. My tree has a lot of apples on my side. We on the same tree. Your your side is barren. Equity is I've got a ladder, you've got a ladder. I've got some apples, you got a few apples. We're helping you reach a little bit higher so you can get to some of my apples. Justice. All right. Is Monique, you're repeating yourself, Don. You get like apples. you get like Scott. Right. You get like Scott. But that sounds like equitable. You get like Scott. Hold on, hold on. Ben. Ben respond. I got it, Monique. Ben respond. Ben respond. Yeah, I yeah, I, I think that um we, we should not get hung up in the semantics of the difference between equity and equality and empowerment. We need all three. It's not semantics. And, it's and, and 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 I think that uh we have to press the course. Oh, uh, we, there's no difference of opinion. The question is, what are we going to do about it? We have a problem, and this problem mm -hmm. is, is a serious, systematic problem, and we need to work together to address this problem. Uh, 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 listen, I don't think we should be accepting any inequality. I don't think we should be accepting any inequity, and I don't think we should accept anything that's not going to give us the capacity to empower ourselves, to build our businesses, and, and raise our communities out of poverty. Uh, is, um, white benevolence is not going to do it. And that is why I think that we have to demand from a business perspective uh, how to engage uh, these new policies. I think the policy articulation by the Biden-Harris administration is great. The question now is how it will be implemented and what will be the results, uh, not four years from now, but now. We, uh, our, our problems are so severe in black America we do not have time to have more studies. We know the problem. Now's the time for us to get action. And that is why uh, reparations is just not about money. Reparations is about repairing the damage. And the damage is systematic when it comes to black-owned businesses. Look, for me, this is real simple. I keep it real simple. Short term, the amount of money they're spending on COVID, how much money is going to black media when it comes to outreach and when it comes to the vaccine? That's first. That's what I want to know right now. Second thing, I want to audit on the census money because they're still dealing with that, where that money is going. Is there any money left? Thirdly, the CBC should say there should be a complete audit of every single federal agency to know, look at every single fed contract right now, who, what media, what advertising agency has the contract and what black ad agencies are those white ad agencies partnering with and what black media are getting dollars from those existing ad agencies. And so that's what should happen. And so, Ben, I don't know who y'all have uh, with NMP working on that. We can certainly work together on that. But we, get, but we have to put that information out and expose mm -hmm. it because if people aren't armed with information, then they don't have it. And I dare say Scott's law firm should be looking at also uh, looking at filing a significant lawsuit against the advertising industry for their systematic exclusion of black folks. But that's got something you can work on. And I'm sure Rainbow Push will want to be involved in it as well. And since Monique here, I'm sure she can help Scott as well. So everybody on this panel can go to work. Now what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Easy. I just gave you the damn plan. 
See, clearly, you see, gave see, us see, clear, see, clearly, Scott, you know nothing about the Bible. Where in Nehemiah, when Nehemiah surveyed the wall and there was damage, and then he then came up with a plan of action, and then he went to the uh -huh. people. The Bible says the people said, let us rebuild. <laughs> See, Dr. Davis, he don't know rolling, nothing rolling, about rolling. that, Doc. Doc, Doc, he ain't read Nehemiah. He don't know. Well, but look, one, one good thing I can say about Scott Bowling, that's he's the general counsel for the National Newspaper Publishers Association. And the reason why we chose him, we are going to have to take uh, legal action. We are also going to have to do big extra legal action. But uh, I think the audit, because, see, the thing is, Bowling, there have been studies, you know, and, and so the data is there. The question is now, it's time for action by these federal agencies. And of course, we're going to meet with the Congressional Black Caucus, absolutely, as you recommended. And we're going to meet with the White House. Uh, we're going to meet with uh, Susan Rice. I think we need a whole of a government approach to make sure that we don't get triaged this time. You know, what, what happened with right. the United States Census was terrible. The way they treated the Carl Williams agent, which was the only black agent, she was a subcontractor. They never contracted with black-owned ad agencies. You know, they did it with the white agency. And that's why uh, black-owned media did not get a fair share of those advertising dollars. That only happens every 10 years with the U.S. Census. All yeah, right. Dr. Chambers, All if right. I may, uh, um, uh, Roland, if I may. One of the, 30 one seconds, of the, 30 uh, seconds. 30 seconds. The attack has to also go to the agency so when that bid comes out, we're not accepting subcontracts. We need to be a direct contractor. And the way the bid is, is, is written has to be looked at. And then you can contest that bid through a bid protest so that we get more direct contracts versus subcontracts. Yes, and I'm saying that's what your law firm is there for. Ben Chavis, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. We're going to keep this thing going. And, and the words, Thank you. In the Absolutely. In the words of that financial wizard, Frank Lucas, the gangster, I'm going to get that money. <laughs> it's right on TV, right? You just said it, just like that. He said uh -oh. it. All right. Denzel in the movie. I'm gonna get that money. Ben Tables, I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. All right, stop talking, Scott. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Scott, will you be quiet? Every Wednesday, I gotta do this. Robert and Monique know how to be quiet when I'm trying to end a segment. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. All right, y'all. All right, All right folks. Back to our whole mark on future video in just one moment. It's time to be smart. When we control our institutions, we win. We win. This is the most important news show on television of any racial background. Y'all put two, three, four, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty dollars on this and keep this going. What you've done, Roland, since this crisis came out in full bloom. Anybody watching this, tell your friends. Go back and look at the last two weeks, especially of Roland Martin Unfiltered. I mean, hell, go back and look at the last two days. You've had sitting United States senators today, Klobuchar and Harris. Whatever you have that you have, you can bring to Roland Martin Unfiltered to support it. Please do, because this information may literally save your life. Watch Roland Martin Unfiltered daily at 6 p.m. Eastern on YouTube, Facebook, or Periscope, or go to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Support the Roland Martin Unfiltered Daily Digital Show by going to RolandMartinUnfiltered.com. Our goal is to get 20,000 of our fans contributing 50 bucks each for the whole year. You can make this possible. RolandMartinUnfiltered.com.